Hello again, friends. We just learned that rocks are made of minerals and that there are three different rock groups. But does water affect rocks? This is a water festival after all. The short answer is yes. Of course water affects rocks. Let's look at a few places where we can see how water is affecting rocks in some way. This is Alora Gorge. Water and ice carved out this channel long ago and continues to do so today. If you've never been to Alora Gorge, I highly recommend you come and visit with your family. It's a great place to explore. This is the Grand River. Along the edge of the river, you can see and pick up rocks that have been carried down from upstream. You'll also notice that these river rocks have been smoothed by the water flowing over them for generations. And this is a sandy beach, a gathering place for all of the tiny bits of rock. The rocks in all of these spots were shaped, moved, or brought together by water. That's right, water has power. Water has the power to break rocks apart. When rocks break apart, we call that weathering. Weathering is different from the weather outside. Weathering is when rocks break into smaller pieces. A good example of this is when water gets into cracks in rock and breaks them apart when water freezes in the winter time. Just like you can see here in these large and small cracks in the rock face. Water also moves smaller rocks from one location to another. When water moves rocks, we call this erosion. And this is a great place to see erosion happening, especially in the spring when there's lots of snow melting and the water level in the river is high. When there's lots of water moving down the Grand River, it flows along the edges of the banks, picks up rocks, picks up soil, picks up little pieces of, of gravel and carries it down stream in the Grand River. Eventually, all of those little rocks end up somewhere. And when water moves rocks to a new location, like a beach, we call this deposition. Let's go see Oliver and do a little experiment to see weathering, erosion, and deposition in action. Let's do a quick experiment to see weathering, erosion, and deposition in action. For this experiment, I'm using a cookie tray some damp sand and gravel, this plastic container, but you can also use something like a thick book. I also have a jar of water, a watering can, and some towels. I place the container underneath one side of the pan, and then at the bottom of the pan, I place some towels to catch any possible runaway water. Then I built up some land here at the top of the tray with the sand and gravel. Then I created this river through the land from top to bottom. The next step is to then grab your watering can and then just pour a little bit of water at the top of the land. Watch how the water flows down the land following the riverbed. Do you see how the water is breaking down our riverbanks? Remember, this is an example of weathering because weathering breaks down rocks. Also notice that the water is carrying these little pieces of sand with it as it flows. This is a great example of erosion. Remember, erosion moves the rocks. You may also notice that at the start of our experiment, there was no water or sand at the bottom of our tray here. What do you see at the bottom of our tray now? All of this was carried down our tray and was deposited here at the bottom. This is an example of deposition. So let's repeat those processes. Weathering breaks down the rocks, erosion moves the rocks, and then deposition drops the rocks in a new place. Thanks, Oliver, that was great. So the next time you're out in nature looking at some rocks, 
think about how water might have affected them. Did weathering break them? Did erosion move them? Or did deposition cause them to come together? I hope you can go out and have some fun.